today I'm going to be answering all the questions that I've gotten on this pink hair situation. I'm gonna try and cover as much as I can from how I got this color, the bleaching process, hair care and maintenance, and uh, all the good stuff. Before we get started, I just wanna say I'm not a professional, I'm not a hairstylist or anything like that. This is all based off of my experience and every experience is different. With that said, let's get started. My natural hair color is very black. You can probably tell from the roots that are growing out. One of the questions I get a lot is how light did I have to bleach my hair in order to get to this pink hair color, which isn't something I can answer directly because I've gone through a few different hair colors before getting to this one. When I first bleached it, I still had leftover bleach from when I had done a balayage on my hair. I couldn't bleach it as much as I wanted to that first time because it would have really damaged my hair. Like I think pieces might've fallen out or something like that. So my stylist has really worked with me to get to the hair colors that I've wanted. It started off with this milk tea blonde. Um, some people called it like a brunette shade. Then we went to a yellow blonde. Then we went to a silver ash blonde, like kind of grayish. Um, and then over quarantine, I got bored and I dyed it myself at home, this dark blue, dark gray color. And then when the salons opened up again and I could see my stylist, um, that's where the real fun kind of began, I guess. Um, so she had to bleach my roots. Um, they were pretty thick at that time, pretty long. And then she had to lift the dark blue grayish color out of my hair. So after she lifted the blue out, it actually left a reddish pinkish tint in my blonde hair. She told me I could do like an ashy brown shade. And at the time I was like, I don't really wanna go darker just yet. Um, but I knew that I had compromised my own hair by dyeing it this wild blue color. Because there was a pink tint over, I was like, can we try and do pink? Um, <laughs> and she said, yeah, we could totally do pink. I would say you'd have to go pretty light to get to this pink shade. When my hair gets bleached, it goes from black to orange to yellow to white. And I don't think you can really be in that orange area if you want this kind of pink tone shade or any pastel shade. It would have to be pretty light. It really depends on how healthy your hair is the first time you bleach it and how much bleach it can handle because my hair wasn't in the best state. There was some leftover trauma to it. Um, I couldn't go fully blonde, fully light. And so it took some time for me to get there. Definitely have an idea of what that bleaching process is like so you kind of know what to expect and you won't be surprised. Every time I go in to bleach my hair, whether it's full bleach or just my roots, it does take a few hours. So definitely plan to be at the salon for the whole day. I block out the whole day just in case because you just don't know what's gonna happen with your hair, especially if it's the first time you're doing it. I would say I've been there anywhere between three to five, six hours. Everyone reacts differently, so you just never know. My scalp gets really hot and itchy. Sometimes it's easier to handle, other times it's not as easy. The most painful part for me is not actually the bleaching process, it's after the bleach has been washed off and your pores are more open and they start applying the hair dye, that's when my scalp feels really sensitive. There was this one time where I had a more serious allergic reaction where my palms started getting itchy and red and then it just moved down my body like all the way down to my feet my whole body just started getting really red and itchy and we were halfway through bleaching and so I just had to stop myself from scratching because I felt like that irritated even more and at that point it was like a mind over matter kind of thing I was just like it's not happening just ignore it and it'll go away and once they washed off the bleach all the symptoms alleviated but it can get very serious so just be aware of your body and how you're feeling after that time I've never had a reaction like that ever again so it's just different every time and your immunity to bleach changes over time just because you were okay with it from the beginning doesn't mean that you'll be okay with it in the end um, so that's kind of what I found in my research because I was so confused why that had happened to me I was like I thought I was okay with bleach but I'm not I also take Claritin D now before I go in to alleviate any allergic reactions um, just to be on the safe side. Bleaching definitely compromises the integrity of your hair. Anything you do to your hair that's not natural compromises the integrity of your hair. When I had the milk tea blonde, my hair was still pretty healthy. It wasn't so bad. Um, but when I went lighter and lighter, the health of my hair definitely kind of is not the same. <laughs> Let me just say that. There are definitely parts that have broken up. It's not as thick or coarse. Um, or heavy as it used to be. So you definitely have to learn how to take care of your new hair because it changes the texture of your hair, it changes how it moves, it changes how it lays, 
everything so it's a whole learning process just keep that in mind and be patient with yourself because it does take time to adapt to like a new hair texture <laughs> In terms of touch-ups and how often I dye my roots, I would say about one and a half to two months. Two months is kind of stretching it. I think ideally it's like four to six weeks. My stylist said not to let my roots grow out over, I think it was like an inch or so. I get so many questions on how I maintain my hair color, how I keep it pink. And the short answer is you really don't. Your hair color is going to fade all the time no matter what color it is if it's not your natural hair color. I've gone into the salon to get my hair redone pink twice now and when I leave the salon it's not this color it's actually this bright pink rose goldish shade and then with every hair washing it just fades out to a more pastel -y, lighter pink. If you want it to last for a while you just kind of have to start off with a really bright color and then let it do its thing over time. There are some things that I do to try and stretch out the color make it not fade as fast um, and these are some tips that I've learned from my stylist and some things that I've learned on my own. So I only wash my hair about once a week and you're supposed to use lukewarm water cold honestly if you can. Hot water not only damages your hair but it also can strip more color away from your hair, reduce the use of heating tools. Um, so I only curl my hair about once a week and then let it kind of die down as well throughout the week. And then swimming in a pool or even in salt water, um, sun exposure, those are all things that can affect the color of your hair. I try not to think about that too much because I wanna have fun. <laughs> I wanna be out in the sun and on the beach. So if that's gonna change my hair color, it's gonna change my hair color. I wanna be able to live a little bit, you know? I also use this pink, dye that's been mixed with my Fanola Fiber Fix Bond Connector. I use this as conditioner. So my friend James actually did a light pastel balayage pink on me a few years ago and he mixed dye into this conditioner for me to kind of help you know, keep the pink a little bit longer. So I'm, I'm almost out of this, but I think this helps a lot just to put on some pigment in there. There's another really good one that you can get off of Amazon called Overtone. I haven't tried that myself yet. I'll probably get that next after I'm done with this tub, but I've heard great things about that, which I'll link down below if you're interested in checking it out. Not only do they have pink, they have a bunch of different colors and you can mix it. I would say if you are trying to maintain a pastel color, mix it in with your conditioner and then apply it into your hair because otherwise it would be really bright if you want to lighten it up a little bit um, do this trick I have a bunch of different products that I use I didn't realize how much until I lined it all up but I don't use all of them at once sometimes I just mix and match depending on how I feel you can see some of them over there um, but let me just talk about a few products that I really love so first is this aquas water defense pre-wash so this is like a primer for your hair you spray it on before you wash your hair before it's wet or anything you leave it on for a minimum of two minutes the longer the better it just helps with water damage and also helps to contain frizz after that I would dampen my hair just a little bit like with a spray bottle and then apply a hair mask so in the past I would just use a fiber fix um, bond connector but because I'm running really low on this I stopped doing that and only applied this in the shower after I shampoo but you can use any hair mask um, I don't really tend to like using hair masks uh, I just it just makes me feel really uncomfortable but another one that I really love is the one from bumble and bumble that one is amazing um, you can leave that overnight as well and just put a hair net on I just like to do it before I shower so I can wash it off immediately. I love Fanola products in general, so I use the Fanola shampoo and the Fanola Fix Bond Connector. To me, it works as a mask and a conditioner, and it's really nice. Like, anytime I travel or go home to see my parents, I cannot leave this behind because I've tried their shampoos, I've used hotel shampoos. It is so rough on your hair. It's just not as good, and this leaves my hair feeling really soft and shiny and um, just much more easier to manage. I also use an Aquas hair towel, hair turban, to wrap everything after I get out of the shower. Instead of using a bath towel, it's just a little bit better. It helps to remove some of that excess water from your hair before you need to blow dry. And I love that the hair wrap is so light. It's not as heavy as wrapping your hair in a towel towel because that can really pull and tug on your hair as well. After that, I will start with my long list of leave-in products. So I don't brush my hair just yet. I find that the leave-in products really help to detangle and smoothen my hair, which makes the hair brushing process a lot easier. So I use a bunch of different things from hair oils to hair serums to leave-in creams. Um, heat protectants to really help uh, with my hair. I don't know if I'm being excessive with all of the products that I'm using, but 
I just think of my skincare routine and that definitely has more than one product going into it so I kind of repeat the same thing when it comes to my hair. I will usually start with my products from Nature Elixir. These are amazing products and they smell so good. So I have a hair oil from them, a hair repair serum, and also a leave-in hair cream. I also really like this oil mist from Nature Lab. So this comes in a spray bottle. I think I've talked about this before but this is really nice. It's an easy way to apply your oils. I don't always love love getting oiled all over my hands and this just makes it really convenient. The mist is really fine and it smells amazing. It smells so good. I think it's one of my favorite hair care scents. I also have been using this OGX Smoothing Liquid Pearl Luminescent Serum. Um, this is really pretty. I mostly use this because it's really pretty. It has these little like glitter specks in it. I've also been using this product from Nature Lab. This is their Perfect Repair Leave-In Treatment. It's safe for color. It actually comes out as foam, which is really interesting. And this helps with damaged hair and actually speeds your drying time, which I've actually noticed. Um, my hair just gets dry really fast and I have to blow dry it really quickly or else it gets really frizzy. That's another question that I've gotten pretty often is how I reduce frizz and um, a lot of it is with these leave-in products. Another thing is I always blow dry my hair after I shower. Um, my stylist told me that I should always blow dry it afterwards or else it would be really frizzy and it's very true. And I like to blow dry with a round brush. This round brush really helps with frizz so I like to blow dry downwards like this and turn the round brush so that it helps to smooth out my hair, straighten out my hair, and also reduce that frizz. It really does help with that. And when I blow dry, I do use it on a lower heat setting because again, you're not supposed to use as much heat. I also really wanna talk about this brush. This is one of the Tangled Teaser brushes. I never thought it would really make a difference, but because my hair has been color treated and bleached, you can really notice the difference that it makes because it just, makes the hair brushing process so much easier and smoother. It doesn't get tangled as much. Silk pillowcases also really help. If you don't have one, try and get one because it does help to reduce the frizziness of your hair as well. Now I wanna talk about some products that I use during the day. Um, so the hair oil is definitely one of them that I just use if it's feeling a little dry. I'll just slab on a bunch of hair oil. I probably should be doing that every day, but sometimes I just get lazy and forget, especially since I'm spending so much time at home now. My hair also doesn't get greasy that often anymore because it's so dry. It does get greasy once my roots start coming out because that's like my natural hair and I feel like it just produces more oils. I will use the Briogeo Scalp Revival Dry Shampoo. This is a really amazing dry shampoo. I've been loving this for years. It is just a really nice Nice powder. I have a combination of breakage and baby hairs around my hairline and anytime those are out of line I will use hair gel with a spoolie to kind of lay them down Sometimes it takes a lot of hair gel to lay it down So that's kind of the trick that I use if I really want to look put together and want to get those flyaways out of the way The only thing with the spoolie is make sure you do not turn it just swipe it through so don't turn it because I did that once without thinking and all my hair got tangled and stuck in the spoolie and I was so scared that I would have to cut it off. So don't do that. Just brush it. Do not turn your spoolie. I curl my hair about once a week and I do use a heat protectant for that. So I just use the Tresemme Heat Tamer. Um, I've had a previous stylist tell me that I can just use hairspray. It works just as well. So I just do kind of like a mix of those anytime I want to curl my hair. And I use about medium heat because again, you want to protect your hair as much as you can. And with the way that I curl my hair, um, it'll still have some texture the day after. I will say with bleached color treated hair, it holds curl a lot better. I don't know what it is, but it just looks nicer than when I had my natural hair color. <laughs> it's so weird. If you're looking for a hair curling routine, I've done a couple in the past. I'm just gonna link it in the info card and down in the description box because it's the same technique. Um, I've just always curled my hair that way. That is it, my friends. That is everything that I have to say about hair, I think. I know bleaching your hair can sound like a lot of work, um, it can be. Um, it's a lot of maintenance and um, being on top of it and making sure you're really caring about your hair health and all of that, but it is well worth it. It's really fun and it's just a nice way to like express yourself and play around a little bit. Um, I know eventually one day I'm, I'm going to go back to black hair, so I want to make the most of it while I can and just really enjoy this hair coloring process. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you have additional questions that I didn't answer, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them and I will see you in my next video. Bye!